everything that I can. They are willing to go, and so are we. This type of love don't always come and go. Welcome, everybody, to the college football season. I don't want to ruin this one. Welcome back, everybody, to the Triple Play Fantasy Network. I am your host, Kevin Coleman, at the boys underscore 22. And this is another Debbie breakdown, team breakdown. So we've been going through the top 25 teams, looking at Debbie assets, schedule, players to look at for next season, everything in their ADP, all that. And also, if you're a North Carolina Tar Heel football fan, this is a spot where you can actually get a little bit of a preview. So I like to use this as a season preview. And also for Debbie and fantasy people out there, you can use this for just information for your Debbie leagues, C2C leagues. Now, I don't do defense. Uh, I don't really cover that as much. I, I mainly focus on offense. So I know I've been getting some comments about that. I may have to outsource my defensive knowledge to some people that are very much smarter than me uh, in terms of that, in terms of Debbie IDP. I don't do that. That is another thing I like to stay married. Now, we are going to focus on North Carolina, and we're going to be looking at, you know, the Tar Heels and what they've done. Now, Mac Brown, he's been there the last two years. We've seen it. In 2019, he went 7-6. and six. In 2020, he went 8-4. and four. So, you know, as you've seen, he's done a pretty good job of turning that program around at 15-10. and 10. Uh, Last year, the North Carolina Tar Heels finished 8-4 and four, uh, with a loss in the Orange Bowl to Texas A&M. So, uh, but a lot of people had opted out, so you know we'll get mentioned that. But they did lose, uh, and so they finished eight and four. Not a bad year though, and for probably for North Carolina fans, I think that they were a little disappointed because they were expecting a little bit better. But Mac has done a pretty good job of recruiting, which we will going to talk about towards the end. Now let's take a look at their schedule for twenty twenty one. Virginia Tech, Georgia State, Virginia, Georgia Tech, Duke, Florida State, Miami. Typical kind of schedule for the ACC uh, Tar Heels. I, I like that Virginia Tech team. They should win that game. Uh, to be honest, so I, I don't necessarily see them as coming out and, and losing a few of these early games. Uh, I obviously Notre Dame. I think that stretch where they have Florida State, Miami, and Notre Dame, it's going to be big for them. Can they step up? Can they win those games? You know, to me, or North Carolina has uh, they had a little bit of a turnover. Now they have a you know all all American quarterback and Sam Howe, but the other guys got to step up. They've kind of filled some places with some transfers as we're going to mention. But other guys got to really step up, and and who is going to be that guy for them? Can they actually, you know, make some noise? And probably Sam Howell's last year. What does that look like? I think that's a question mark there. But like I said, you know, to me, the Notre Dame, Miami, Florida State stretch is big. Pitt, yeah, maybe if Pitt can turn around. I know some people think Pitt's going to be better this year. So they have a pretty tough schedule. You know, they they're going to be challenged a little bit, and so it'll be interesting to see what they can do. Now, who are they going to get down with? We're going to be talking about their depth chart breakdown. How they're going to be able to fix that. What guys are you should be looking out for? And we're going to start with quarterbacks. And and in my opinion, there's two quarterbacks that you really got to know. Sam Howell, ADP 3.20. You know, he's QB3 going right now. He was actually getting drafted as QB1 for a while there, or QB2 at least. Uh, but now Spencer Rattler, DJU from Clemson have kind of jumped him. And it's going to be an ongoing case between him and Spencer Rattler this year. Like, who's going to be there? I think there's some, you know, this is – there's some outliers and some wild cards and Matt Corral, there's other people, but who is going to be there? Rattler, how? Uh, I don't know. And we're going to be interested to see. We're going to break down the film and look at him here in a minute, but interesting, interesting battle. They're going to be a quarterback. Now, after that, the other kid to look at is Drake May, who I absolutely love. I think Drake May is getting slept on a little bit. Uh, we're going to be talking about him moving his rankings up in the 2024 QB ranks. A lot of the guys I see have him around six, seven, or eight. Like I wouldn't be surprised to see Drake make it into the top three after the, once he starts getting to play, we're going to look at his film, what I like about him. But without further ado, let's talk about Sam Howell. So last year, you know, six one two twenty five, good size. 237, 348, 68% completion percentage, 3,500 yards, 30 touchdowns, seven interceptions, 92 attempts, 146 rushing yards, five touchdowns there. Uh, the, the Probably the best uh, comp I've actually seen for him is uh, Baker Mayfield. I thought that was an interesting comp. I, I wish I could give credit to where I saw that, but I, I saw that and I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good comp. Uh, I do think he how does a little things, some things a little bit, bit better. But for the most part, you know, I, I like him as a prospect. I think he's he's a safe quarterback. Like, I don't know necessarily that he's going to be that top of the line, like this QB class that we saw this last year, but he can still give you that safe floor. Now, let's look at what's, what how does well, and let's talk about it and kind of go through. You'll notice on his tape, like, he does a pretty good job of, you know, reading the defenses pretty well. 
He's got impressive accuracy at all levels. Like you'll see it here getting in it back in the end zone. He, I like his accuracy probably the most out of anything I watch from him on tape and, and just seeing it. He has that ability. He's got arm strength, but you'll see his accuracy. Just gets it to his receiver there. He's got pretty good arm strength. Uh, you know, he's ball placement is elite. He's able to get it to the back shoulder, able to get it to the tight spots. Like that's what sets him apart as a quarterback. And, and you'll notice it here. He's got a little bit of functional athleticism. Not, nothing great. Like he's not going to just, you know, outrun everybody here. But he's, he's definitely going to have that. Uh, he has ability to kind of get it to the guys in the, in the corner, you know, can play, make plays off script. I think that's what probably separates him a little bit. I think he's got a pretty good athleticism in the pocket, but right here, that throw, like that throw is everything that you need to see from him as a quarterback, able to get it to the back shoulder, get it to the receiver catches in the end zone. Like that's the, that's the throw that you should like uh, from him. I love that about him. I love him as a quarterback. When you look at him too, he can, he can, Checks all the intangible boxes. He's a leader. He works hard. He's built that North Carolina program up with Max. So I like that all. Now, the things that I think he struggles with are one major thing. He takes unnecessary risks. Now, that might just be because he was able to because of the talent that he had around him. He's trying to do a lot. We understand that. But he can throw some interceptions. He takes some risks sometimes. He's a little bit like like Baker was at it in college and kind of where he, he kind of is and maybe his first season, right, where he kind of really struggled. So for me, I like Hal. Very solid prospect. Now, can he make that next step? That is the question to see this year. I think he still has some more development to do. He's not done. So that's what I want to see. Now, the young kid that we're going to be talking about is Drake May. 6'5", 210, monster of a man. 398 and 581 in high school, 68% completion percentage. He had over 6,500 yards passing, 86 touchdowns, seven interceptions, and eight rushing touchdowns. That's not going to be a big part of his game. But let's just look at Drake May and, and the things that I like from him. So, first of all, he has arm strength. He's able to get to his guys. Uh, you'll see him in the pocket. He does very well standing in front of pressure. Like, this is a grown-ass man throw right here. Let's go back and just look at this one. He's getting pressured. So, you're going to see the pressure come off the end. Steps up in the pocket, gets just annihilated, and he still is able to drop into the dime in the corner of the end zone. Love that about him. Love his pocket presence. Love his arm strength. I think his size is what's going to set him apart. He's a different quarterback than than what we see from Hal, but and he has some you know functional athleticism. That's crazy, but he's got good intangibles, good delivery. I actually really like his delivery. You'll watch him get out quick. He gets that ball out fast, and he's got the velocity to get on the back shoulder right there. He's got some good intangibles, though. They talk about how he's got, you know, impeccable footwork. He's got everything that you want to see from a base, and that's what I like about him. I think he's not done developing either. Like, he's a young kid. He's going to get it there. He get, but that arm strength and his ability to kind of all place the ball is what really, really sets him apart for me. I love his accuracy. love his delivery. Now, he's never going to have anything, like, really outside the pocket and mobility. So when we talk about fantasy-wise – Will he have that extra Konami code run, rushing ability? I don't think so. So that's always something to think about when we're talking about, you know, quarterbacks, especially in this day and age of football and with Debbie fantasy and so forth. I love his arm strength, love his pocket presence. Like when we're talking about him, he's going to be vaulting up after this year. He's going to vault right into that spot of, hey, this is where it's at. So when we're looking at basically where he's getting drafted right now, Drake May is going to draft him to 86.48, right? So late rounds. Uh, and QB 18, like I really, I'd rather take a shot on him at that ADP than some of the other guys going out, like Haynes King, all these other guys that maybe don't have that NFL pro potential. I think Drake may has pro potential and he's going to be the leader of that team next year. So he's a good guy to draft in like a C2C league and definitely a Debbie quarterback. Like there's a difference between Debbie quarterbacks and non Debbie quarterbacks. And he is a Debbie quarterback. He's going to have that Debbie profile. And I don't mind taking a risk on someone like Drake. I really think he's going to vault himself up in the top three or four category of this class before next year. Um, if he gets some playing time, if not, we're going to be talking about him like, Hey, he has the potential. Now, let's take a look at running backs. So, interesting running back room. We know they lost Javante Williams, Michael Carter. Right now, they have Ty Chandler, transferred from Tennessee, ADP 209.65, running back 84. British Brooks is there. He's going to draft as a running back 138. And then you have some other guys there. I, I actually like Caleb Hood. You know, he's a very he, – he's an interesting prospect to draft. Elijah Green, Josh Henderson. We're going to talk about Kamara Edmonds, though. He's going to draft at running back 26, so I definitely want to talk about him since he has such a high ADP. But a lot of unknowns in this running back room and wide receiver room. So I think that's one thing that we got to talk about with North Carolina – a lot of unknown, right? Now let's look at Ty. You know, Ty Chandler, six foot two ten. Actually, I've I've liked him always at Tennessee. He just never really got the the run that you would like to see. It's probably why he transferred. Hundred attempts, four hundred fifty six yards, four touchdowns last year. 
16 receptions, 111 yards. I think there's a lot of things to like about him, and there's some things to question about him. So let's get into Ty's tape, what we saw last year at Tennessee. I think, first of all, he's a compact runner. He's going to lay the boom. He he gets that forward lean in there, puts his shoulders down, does that. He's got good short area burst. You'll see it here. Acceleration. Like, short area, boom, he's going to hit that hole, go quick. He's a smooth runner in space as well. He's efficient. I like that. He's going to be a goal line guy. He's going to score touchdowns. So he's going to attack it. He has he has good enough burst to attack the seams, and he'll, he'll do that pretty well. I think he could play receiver. You're going to – North Carolina is probably going to get him more involved. You'll see it here, dump offs and those type of things. Because he's so elusive in space, I think they're going to try to get him more involved, a la Michael Carter, those type of groups. But he does have that explosive and that burst, and he's going to hit those holes quick. Now, he, he – he's he, – can break it in the middle. He's not the most breaking tackles. He's not the biggest back. So that that's part of the problem. And I think the biggest concern about him was his vision. Like, hey, does he have the vision? He tends to just want to power down and power down and power down. He doesn't necessarily see the holes very good. He can burst and hit those holes when he does see them, but he struggles with that. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to say, hey, that's going to be the guy. I also don't think he actually has shown a very good job of getting – when he gets hit physicality-wise – he, he struggles with that pass blocking. He struggles with that. So there's going to be that. So he need, to, he need to improve his receiving ability. Can he do that? Does he show that he has the vision this year to really set it apart? But I think what we've seen from running backs in North Carolina, this is a perfect spot for him. Like this is a perfect spot for him to go. Now, the next guy that we're going to talk about is the highly recruited Kamar Edmonds, 5'11", 227. Prep stats. He had 122 attempts, 1,400 yards, 20 touchdowns, 13 receptions, 127 yards, and a touchdown there. I like Edmonds, so don't get me wrong, but I, I do think he's getting drafted a little higher than what I want to see. So when we look at the ADP, he's going to draft his running back 26. I know that he's dealt with a little bit of an injury, uh, so I don't necessarily know if he's going to even get on the fields, the field, excuse me, uh, next year. I, I don't necessarily, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go. I know he had an ankle injury. He's had a lot of different things going on, uh, and he, he's definitely someone that's getting drafted based on potential. Right. So we got to talk about that. He's based on potential here. So let's look at the tape because I do want to kind of go over what I see from him. And you you guys are going to decide, hey, should he be getting drafted in there? I'm going to get some guys that are going around that same time. So you'll see him here. Pretty good burst. He gets the outside pretty well. I think that's the thing that people like about him the most is his ability to kind of get the burst. And then he's going to break it away. I, I, I like that about him. And you'll notice that on tape like he's he's not bad there. Uh, getting across and going up up the field. He's got some return abilities, as you see here. Again, he's got, he's got good patience, good vision, and he's got good burst. And you'll see him make people miss, right? Like you're going to see that. I would say that he's more quick, though. Like he's not going to – he's got that good acceleration inside the tackles, and he's got that good – you'll see it here. Hey, he sees the hole well. That hole is wide open. He hits it well. There's nothing to say that he's not – great but he he's i think some people are touting him a little bit too high uh they some people haven't really ranked high in this freshman class i don't have him ranked as high as everybody else and i know my guy felix sharp from campus of and doesn't either so i tend to agree with felix because he's way smarter than me but when you're looking at his abilities i think he does a fine job i think he's gonna catch the ball very well he has the hole pretty well i think he went to a nice spot in north carolina that's gonna enable him to succeed just based on what they like to do with their running backs. So I like that. He's got a strong frame. I think he's going to build on that, that frame a little bit. I, 5'11", 227 already. So he's a big dude with, with his skill set. You got to see him develop a little bit more of that speed. So, you know, 225 would be a good spot for him. 220, 225 develops that speed, gets a little faster. Maybe his foot, his, his footwork gets a little bit better. But overall, not a bad back. I know that he had to sit out a senior year. He hasn't played football. So that's the other thing we're talking about is like he's had his injuries. He hasn't really played. So he's going to take a little bit of time to develop. If you're drafting him in a C2C league, you shouldn't expect him to really give you any contributors. Now, Debbie, I don't mind it. But again, when you're looking at kind of where he's getting drafted by, Zach Charbonnet is there, Zonovan Knight is there, Romaine, Romaine Davis is there, Austin Jones, Devin Neal. Like, his ADP is not bad, to, depending on who, who you're thinking about taking at the running back position. So when we talk about that running back position, it's there. Noah Kane, Sincere McCormick, Jerome Ford are all getting drafted just ahead of him in C2C, kind of that area. So I don't mind that. Now, as far as like, hey, who's going to be the guy as, as the running back class in that class? So some people have Edmonds up really, really high. I'd see, I'd say he's he's probably, my, I believe he's my running back 10 right now. So in that class, in the 2024 class, I have him as my running back 10. 
which we'll see if he ships up or not, but I don't see the playing time going to be there too much this year uh, unless he can kind of pop out of there. But they do have that right we talked about. they got some depth here. Not big names, British Brooks, Elijah Green, Caleb Hood, these other guys, Ty Chandler, but they're going to have depth there. I don't think they're going to have to lead on Edmonds, which is probably good. He's probably going to need that development year. Uh, just, just a heads up there. Now, the most intriguing room out of this whole thing is the wide receiver room. The wide receivers are wide open in this thing. Josh Downs, ADP 56.82, wide receiver 19. Coffee Brown, ADP 233.16, wide receiver 94, a uh, younger brother of Diami Brown uh, for the Redskins. Bo Corrales, like him, Emory Simmons, Antoine Gein. You just keep going through all these guys, Kobe, um, Pastor, J.J. Jones. Like, there is a, there's a lot of talent in this room, but who's going to step up? Like, hey, who's going to be that guy? So there's two guys we're going to look at, and we're going to look at one later, Coffee Brown, and we're going to look at one right now. The guy that we want to look at is Josh Downs. Josh Downs is going to be an interesting prospect. Uh, like I said, he's going as wide receiver. When you look at it, where he's going at, wide receiver 19. There's a lot of guys in this area of like, who can Josh Downs be? Is he going to be a, a day one guy or a day two, day three guy? Right now, I think he's a day two guy. Like, I think he's in that borderline day two guy. I like him, though. I like him. He probably needs to put on a little size for what he has, but he, he's, he's pretty good at just kind of separating and we'll look at that and his breakaway speed like he's got breakaway speed and does that pretty well but can he step up now now that Newsom and Brown are gone is Josh Downs going to be able to step up in that offense so if we if we watch him a little bit this is probably his most famous play from last year against Texas A&M he's got that big playability and when you watch him here he, you know he caught a lot of he caught a hell of a lot of passes in high school and you'll notice it here gets off the line pretty quick and, and that's why I like he does have some route running ability and he's got against press coverage. He does a pretty good job, even though he's not the biggest, strongest guy. But I think with the the true question mark or the true you know thing about him, the strength is his yak. He's going to get the ball in space, and that's what a lot of these guys are. When we look at Brown too, in a little bit, they get this ball in space and they're gone. He's fast. He's quick. He's able to basically when he gets the ball in his hands, he's an athlete. Now, does that translate well to the NFL? I think the NFL is shifting, right? We've been seeing this with wide receivers. A lot of the guys and Debbie guys that I talk to and communicate with, they're like, hey, we like these big guys, big profile wide receivers. But look at what's happened to these guys. Seth Williams, Tamara and Terry. All these guys have been kind of shut down. Now they're looking for these smaller guys, wide receivers at the scrub. That's a, that's, that's a legitimate concern. I like Josh. I do think that when we look at where he's getting drafted at, you could be saying, hey, it's a little bit too too high for me, and I understand that. Uh, I, I maybe take a shot in some other freshmen around that time, a G. Hall, other groups there. If you're looking for a solid wide receiver three, I think he's a safe wide receiver three probably option in the NFL fantasy world right now but i wouldn't give up a second for him I, I, he's still a third round value for me uh, but i like him in terms of he's going to get the targets he's going to get the volume that you want to going to see this year so we could be talking about this but the question mark is a guy like him and a guy like i don't know marvin mims from oklahoma who are these guys are they going to be able to separate themselves and be that next kind of level guy i think that's the question mark he's going around like jojo earl demanda moss Emeka ubuka uh, Jaden hasswood so some of the other guys there i don't mind him getting ahead of some of those guys i might take a shot at jojo earl because he's a special talent i don't know if downs is like a massive special talent but he's gonna be very solid talent for north carolina he's getting drafted uh you know behind like jordan addison i probably recommend getting downs over addison but again the, we're just nitpicking here. Okay, we're just going to be nitpicking here. Now, the, let's look at the tight end room really quick. There's not a lot of Debbie relevant tight ends. Garrett Walton, Kamari Morales, John Copenhaver, Kendall Carr. Like, none of these guys are really going to step up for Debbie or even C2C purposes. I don't necessarily think you're drafting any of these guys. But the guy that just keep an eye on, I mean, Garrett Walton is there. He's been there for a while now. 6'4", 245. His 2020 stats, 19 receptions, 255 yards, and two touchdowns. So he's a bigger kind of target. I don't necessarily think he's going to be a, a guy that we got to talk to about fantasy. But I just want to give him a shout out. Like, he's going to be a very solid producer at North Carolina for the team. Like, that's going to be a very valid thing. I don't necessarily think he's a Debbie asset. So please don't be drafting this guy as that. Um, but I wanted to give him a shout out because, hey, we got to give him a shout out here. Now, my C2C targets that, I, that I'm going for is Coffee Brown. My receiver, six foot, 190. I love this kid. I talked about him recently. Now, his prep stats, a little out there this last season. Uh, when we saw it, 15 receptions, 337 yards, and two touchdowns. So nothing crazy. But I do want to take a look at his film real quick. So you're going to notice him last year. This is one of his big runs he has. Yak ability, yak ability, yak ability. This kid is fast. And they talked about already him being one of the fastest kids in the program. 
he's 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 a little slender, so that's one of the things we're going to talk about. He's got to put on some weight, but he is a straight just monster when he gets the ball in his hands. You'll see it here, able to break tackles. He's an athlete. They're going to get him now. There's concerns, and, and I put this out yesterday on my Twitter account. I talked about him like, hey, this kid is getting slept on a little bit with this wide receiver room. We can talk about him being maybe, hey, maybe he'll outplace Josh Downs. Like that's not a unquestioned thing. I think some people question where they're going to put him, and I, and I question this. He's talented. Get him the damn ball. And, and Mac Brown's done a good job. Sam Howell's going to find him. Like, they're going to get him a ball in space. They're going to get him a ball. He's a pretty good route runner. I don't necessarily think he's refined yet, but that's where, you know, coaching comes in. But he is an athlete, right? So if you're an athlete, get him the ball. Watch him make, create for the team. Score touchdowns. I mean, they're going to do those type of things. Look at just how fast this kid is. I like him. I think he's going to have to return a little bit of some strength here. Now, he's more of a C2C asset for me right now, but he is someone that can maybe vault himself up a little bit. If he has a good year, we're talking about Debbie, and that's that's where it's at, right? So they, can they vault themselves in there? I think he's a great C2C target, though, because like we talked about, he's going as, when you look at the wide receiver room, wide receiver 94. I think he's going to outdo that ADP. He's a value. Boom, grab him now, okay, especially in your C2C leagues. You can grab him in those rounds, the late rounds there, and he, maybe he can be a solid wide receiver producer towards the middle, towards the end of the season when he's really getting some playing time now. Now, let's look at the 2022 recruiting class. Now, right now they're hard, they're hard football commits. They're ranked 38th nationally. So last year they were 14th. Mac Brown's done a pretty good job in North Carolina. Right now it's 38. The ACC rank is six, but they still got a lot of time. They've really been focusing on the defensive side. They got a couple a couple edge rushers that are ranked really high. Cornerback uh, Tayon Holloway is there. You know Mal Malachi Hamrick, edge rusher there. He he's, looks like he's legit. But the two offensive guys I want to talk about right now is Tyjon Champ Chapman, wide receiver, and then you're going to look at Connor Harrow, quarterback. So let's look at let's look at these these guys and what they did so let's look at chapman i i'll be honest with all my guys out there i appreciate you guys uh you know following me and doing these type of things his prep stats were so hard to find i was literally reading a north carolina or excuse me a gazette from i don't know where it was i, I believe it was virginia beach some virginia beach gazette out there trying to find his stats. And I did find his stats from last year, 39 receptions, 645 yards, but I cannot find his touchdowns because he wasn't leading in the category. So my apologies there, but he is an interesting prospect to watch. He's 5'10", 170. We're going to talk about him in a little bit more detail. And then after that, it was Connor Harrell. So they got the quarterback of the class, 6'1", 189. 229, 312, 3,500 yards, 42 touchdowns, three interceptions. He also has 61 attempts, 319 yards, and five touchdowns. He is a very, very interesting prospect, and, and I like him. Like Now, they have Drake there, so they're really bringing this kid in to see what they have. Will he stay? I'm sure he'll stay as a hard commit, but there's always those question marks, right, when we talk about recruiting. Now, let's take a look at, let's take a look at this. So let's take a look at Connor first. Interesting prospect. Like when I talk about, it, I'm watching his tape. I like what I see out there. He's done a pretty good job. He he's pretty he's pretty big, even though his size doesn't be there. He he's got that athleticism though. Like this is a totally different than Drake May, right? When we're talking about get out of the way, ref. When you're talking about you know who they are as profiles and players, like he makes that play right there. You'll see him. He does a pretty good intangible job. You'll watch him here. Like he's gonna sit in the pocket breaks down pretty quick. His arm is pretty good. Like when I was watching his tape, I was like, hey, you know what? He's got a Pretty good arm. I think sometimes it flails a little bit, especially on the deeper throws. But, you know, they put him in that offense pretty well. I think he's going to be a system guy. You'll see that little velocity on his arm, and he knows where he's going. He doesn't do a lot of reading in this field. I think that's the one other area. It's kind of one read he's going to go. You'll see him right there. He's staring down at his receiver. He knew where he wanted to go. He's definitely got to work on that. So you'll notice that about him. But, hey, you know what? I think that, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a late riser on the recruiting trail. You know, he had an offer from North Carolina, Arizona State, some other some other programs, not not very high programs. But this is the type of kid you bring in, you see what you got with him. And I think maybe they got him on the forefront. But you making these throws, he can do it. Like, he can play quarterback. So, interesting prospect here. Now, let's go to Chapman. I like Chapman a lot when I was watching his tape. I think that he – you know, I, I he he's gonna he's gonna struggle a little bit because of his size, but these this is the wide North Carolina frame, right? We've talked about this. This is what he likes to do. He's got that ideal plan to play slot, so I think he's gonna be playing slot there. He's got a really pretty elite athleticism, so he's elusive. All the stuff that I was when I've been going over like all his his, his camp seven on seven everything out of there. The word that keeps saying is create separation, excellent separator, excellent separator. I mean that's what people recruiting coordinators 
camps, elite, all those things that I've been looking at. A separator, separator, separator. So I think he's going to be there. He's going to stretch defenses uh, on, on different routes just because of his speed. He's elusive in tight spots. He has to be more physical, though. I think that's the thing. Like, with these receivers, got to be a little bit more physical. But his ability to create yak and, and go, like, we literally we've seen three different wide receivers today at North Carolina's film. You know, Downs, Brown, and him. And, and they're all the same profile. Like they, they know what they're looking for in their receivers. So I like that. Now, if we pair him now with Drake May, could you imagine that? They also put him at running back like because he's just an athlete. So that's what their goal is, designed around him. Hey, can they do this? I think he tracks the ball very well when I watch his tape. He does a very good job of not just body catching. So I do like that. He's got to get more physical and stuff. But and, and I think the one lack of thing that he will also do is he'll dance around a little bit because at the high school level, he's used to doing that. And that's just something he's going to have to fix, but he will. I mean, these are the little things that we're talking about here, but his yak ability, ability to take the top off the defenses. And you'll see it here. This is a, this is a great route. Just gets by his, it gets by his corner. Again, when we're talking about who he's facing, I think that's the key, like competition wise, going to have to get a little bit more up, but he's going to all the camps that you'd like to see. And that right there is going to set him apart. So out of all these guys that we've been mentioning, I, I love this class, and I, I think that the two recruiting classes that they got, Mac has done a good job of recruiting, getting guys in there for the North Carolina system, not anybody else's other system. So let's go through again real quick. So 2021 schedule, again, Florida State, Miami, Notre Dame, that's their, that's their big one. That's the, kind of their big stretch, I believe. Sam Howe, Drake May, two guys there that I definitely you know you can go after. Drake May is a guy, a must draft guy for me right now. So Drake May is a must draft guy. Then we got Ty Chandler. Can he separate himself in this class? Uh, I don't know. We're gonna see. Kamar Edmonds, big question mark for me in terms of Debbie. I don't think in terms of like production and college, he's gonna be just fine. And then wide receiver room is wide open. And when we're looking at two guys here, obviously Coffee Brown. And then obviously Josh Downs. So those are the two guys that we're going to be looking there. And other than that, you know, the recruiting class is there and, and they're moving up. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about North Carolina football. I appreciate everybody that has hit that subscribe button already or let me know that you appreciate the series. Look out for the next one coming in the next couple of days. Until next time, see you later.